Alright guys, Bill, I'm here back with a new video, and in this video, I'm back with another player ranking for a recently finished season of Big Brother Canada, where I'll be doing the player ranking for Big Brother Canada 11. Now, obviously, due to the lack of live feeds and only having digital dailies, obviously, I'm coming into this player ranking with a lot less knowledge than I typically would. However, I'll still be ranking the players based on how I feel like they played on this season. However, there's a player that I don't feel like I can properly rank based on the fact that we just have very little information on this player at all and that person is obviously the person that walked at the very beginning of the season that being a mall who again like i just don't feel like we have enough information to properly rank i mean and for all intents and purposes you could just consider her number 16 however i just feel like it's not even worth ranking her considering again she was barely on the show was taken out in episode two never had a single confessional now from post show it does seem like she was close to the likes of Kuzi and daniel i assume that means she probably would have been involved in the shady bunch and probably later the crown had she stayed it did seem like she was somewhat liked socially at least to the point where she wasn't an immediate target so again like if she did stay in the game she would definitely not be at the very bottom but i just feel like with so little information i can't properly assess her so i decided to technically leave her off the list now let's get into the actual list itself starting it off at number 15 we have another player that also walked from the game and that person is vanessa i really feel like vanessa just played a overall pretty bad game here i mean the only thing that i could argue putting her higher is the fact that she didn't go home under normal circumstances and also probably wouldn't have gone home for a bit she was not in direct danger however i just don't think she played well at all around that i mean if we're looking at her game she never had any true close relationships or alliances that would propel her through the game i mean she seemed to have a somewhat decent social relationship with someone like a dan a goodish relationship with cozy despite the fact that cozy later nominates her like it really felt like there was no one actually fighting for vanessa in the game to where she was just kind of left on the outs after week one during week two she tries to blow up the game by blowing up zach's position by leaking that he's going after rob only for rob to then just not believe her and instead, all it's doing is putting a further target on her back. Now with Zach and Ty considering taking her out next. Seemingly all just due to the fact that she was annoyed at the fact that Zach called her emotional. And in essence, essentially just kind of proving his point. But then she tries to save Rob, fails at that, still votes for him to stay, only to then proceed to lie about her vote in a situation where everyone knows that she's lying. And then proceed to make her a very easy pawn due to the fact that everyone knows that she's lying. Which has her being put up by Kuzi, a suboptimal move for Kuzi herself. As while Vanessa was not the target, I mean there was still a world where Vanessa could have gone home with the likes of Ty in particular directly coming for her over Santina or if Nam stayed the same it would not be that big of a surprise if the votes flipped against her but she technically wasn't the target she technically wasn't going home at the time that she actually went home and that's what makes it very tough to assess her game as again like it technically didn't end properly and she was technically in a spot where not many people were directly coming after her i mean she was probably a secondary target or decent amount of the house but she wasn't really the primary target for really anybody so again wouldn't surprise me if she would have had longevity but i just think her game as a whole was just very lackluster but they're seeming to make wrong decisions every single time she made a decision in the game because that for me she's at number 15 here now number 14 moving on to a player that was actually the first boot and that person is john michael and jam is a player that i said in my review that I, again i stand by this the fact that i don't think he does that much wrong now he does play a bit passively he doesn't really solidify his alliances as strong as i personally would have liked him to but really that's an issue with a lot of players in big brother and i don't feel like jm did that much extra wrong to cause his eventual downfall here it really feels like he was taken out due to preconceived notions about him this thought of him being this savvy strategic player that made everyone think of him as threatening despite the fact that he again wasn't really even playing that hard which again is still a criticism again 100 percent. i think his biggest flaw in the game is that he doesn't secure his relationships with the girly pops and koozie and daniel these people that he could have built bonds with he also doesn't secure this bond with zach to where zach instead directly targets him instead of wanting to work with him and those are knocks however i do feel like a lot of that is based around however i do feel like his initial position of being on the outs is largely based around the fact that he didn't fit in with the bro -y guys that ran that first week which is something i don't fully blame him that much for and he did come relatively close to flipping the vote again there was a point in the day before the eviction where 
the girls did come together and did talk about flipping the game on the guys and they consider saving JM however it also was just a really bad spot he was put in as well where he was on the block alongside Dan and Renee with Renee in particular being someone that wants to keep him though she's someone that's on the block so she doesn't have a vote there but also even just the raw level of difficulty of putting this vote together would have been pretty tough as it would have had him having to bond the girly pop side of things with the koozie and Daniel and Anika side of things but again I think he also does good work in the fact that he does actually convince Santina by the end of the week that she did make a mistake in targeting him to where she then tries to campaign to keep him as well again like I do feel like JM had some good game acumen there I just think he plays a bit too passively at the beginning but again I just feel like he does very little actively wrong in comparison to someone like Vanessa which is why he's higher here at number 14 now, number 13 we're moving on to a player that I think is probably one of the worst players to ever make it to jury mind you even their status on the jury is wonky considering the other people leaving that caused them to be on jury but either way at 13 we do have Dan and again I think Dan just all around seemed to be a pretty bad player I mean he seemed to be really clueless at what was really going on I mean week one he thought he had this alliance with JM and Zach only for then Zach to target JM and he himself end up on the block in a position where again like he could have gone home now technically if the noms stayed the same before JM went on the block he probably would have been safe though even then I think there probably would have been talks of getting him out as there were after JM went on the block where again there seemed to be a plan that was brewing to potentially take him out though it doesn't come through but coming into week two he was the number one target pretty much the entire house was ready to target Dan even Zach was willing to let go of Dan only for Dan himself to then win HOH and then make a move completely against his best interest by targeting Rob Rob someone that was willing to work with him after a deal that they made though he really targets Rob under the guidance of Zach fully buying into everything Zach tells him and again all doing so while Zach is still willing to cut him the following week and Ty Zach's number one ally is directly coming for him still following this week oh, Rob is someone that can obviously be used as a shield for him I could potentially be an ally. I mean, it just feels like Dan just completely misunderstood his overall positioning in the house. I think he was in a much better position than what he actually was. When again, to most of the house, he was a massive target due to the fact that he isn't that well socially ingrained and also is just pretty good at competitions. Which leads us to week three, which is the only week where he doesn't go on the block. But even in that position, he should have where he should have been the target for Koozie. And it's not like a situation where I'm going to credit him for not being the target here because I don't think he did anything to not make himself the target. Where again, like 100% the move should have been to get rid of Dan to keep Zach around as a shield while also weakening him. Yet for some reason, she decides to go for Zach himself. But again, like not going to credit Dan really at all for that. And even then, he's on the losing side where he does want to save Zach, yet Ozzy fails at eventually doing so. And that takes us to his actual boot week where he's put up by the invisible HOH in a move where again, Santina's working against her best interest, but Dan can't convince her to do something in her best interest. Mind you, again, the invisible HOH twist is just kind of bad to where it doesn't even let Dan truly fight to stay as he doesn't know who he's supposed to fight with but again I don't think Dan would have been that successful anyway but again Dan was always the target that week I mean people try to claim that Ty had the run he did because he got saved by the veto this week when that's really not the case Dan was always the target anyway but I think that's largely because again like his bad social relationships him also making himself a threat through winning competitions and really just as a whole I feel like Dan plays a very mediocre game I mean there's not a single round of the game where he's in a majority alliance he's consistently either on the outs or making a move that's against his own best interest and while I do think there is some decent comparability from him, I think as a whole, he's just a pretty bad player because he's here number 13. Now, number 12, moving on to a player that Dan actually got out, which is surprising that he's above him. And that person is Roberto. And again, I think Rob is in a similar case as someone like a JM. I think he's someone that doesn't really do that that much wrong outside of playing a bit more passively than I ideally would have liked. However, the reason why he's a few spots higher than Jam and even higher than Dan is because, again, like, one, at least he was actually in the majority alliance for week one. He was part of the bros alliance that did really dictate the action that week and really a lot of the targeting of JM was due to the fact that JM talked about targeting Rob. So I think that's some decent play in itself. However, by the end of week one, Zach and Ty had already turned on Rob and wanted to take him out the following week. However, again, I don't feel like that's due to Rob doing that much wrong. It's really just Ty being the insane player that he is and Rob trying to bring Ty into a side alliance, which again means that Rob really trusts Ty only for Ty to take it as oh this guy has too much power we need to get rid of him and also the fact that we have the jealousy over the sweater with Claudia that was also stupid so again, I feel like that's more of the reason why Ty and Zach target Rob than anything he actually does actively wrong and it really just feels like they target him out of jealousy than anything it's also just a really bad move for them too again it's not even like it's in their best interest to be doing so but again to be fair that's probably more of a knock on Rob is that Rob couldn't get them to do something in their best 
best interest, but at the same time, it's Ty and Zach. But really beyond that, again, at the point that he starts to get targeted, he just really doesn't realize it. He's kind of aloof during that portion of the game. And even at the point where people start to tell him that he's being targeted, the likes of Santina and Vanessa, he doesn't really fully buy into it. And he does have some pretty bad campaigning as well, the where he's kind of just all over the place in his campaigns, not really being direct in telling people his future plans. Though, again, I still think he does decent work in the fact that he at least had four people wanting to save him. He obviously had the strong relationship with John and Santina. He got both Hope and Vanessa to keep him around, and really it was just a fight for the Shady Bunch. But again, I think when he's against Renee, I think it's a very tough sell for him to be kept around there. So even though he does lose out on the vote here, I don't really fault him too, too much, considering how blatant of a threat he came off as. But again, at the end of the day, it's a very similar game to JM. I think it's slightly better in the fact that he had more allies, was in the majority for longer, and had a more direct path to staying, so because he's here number 12. Now number 11, and we're moving on to a player that made it much further into the game, but is also just really bad, and that person is Santina. And it's hilarious to me that people were calling Santina a good player on Twitter for a while, where Santina is probably one of the worst players alongside Dan to have made the jury, where I don't think there's a single round of gameplay where Santina plays well. I mean, as much as people like to disparage her week one, and it is bad, I also feel like it's probably one of her better played weeks in the sense that she does ingrain herself within that bro alliance. She does become a solid number for Zack and Ty to where they want to drag her through the game. And really, the issue with her game moving forward is the fact that she wastes this opportunity to work alongside Zack and Ty. But again, her targeting a JM is really bad. Again, still getting rid of someone that could have potentially worked with her and also making her look like Zack's puppet. And again, she eventually realizes that fact. But the issue is that, again, she makes it very clear to Zack and Ty that she realizes that fact. And through that, that has Zack and Ty later targeting her, where by the end of week two, She's trying to save Rob, actively going against Zack and Ty, and through that becomes the number one target for Zack in the following week. Where Santina was on the block against Vanessa and would have probably gone home had the nom stayed the same. Though again, there was probably a chance that she stays, but I do think more than likely she does go home. And she definitely does go home if it's Santina versus Hope. And even then, potentially goes home against Zack, where it wasn't until the night before that decision was made to take Zack out of the game, despite all the things that Zack did, where Claudia and Chanel were very much considering taking out Santina over Zack, which that's really bad on Santina. And then she then wins HOH in another completely wasted opportunity, a situation where, through the elimination of Zack, she very much could have set up a new power structure. She could have ingrained herself within the majority, be pulled into the eventual Crown Alliance, but then just isn't where even her closest allies and hope and jonathan don't include her in that plan and ends up targeting dan which is not the worst move in the world for her however then also puts ty on the block in a position where ty obviously ends up realizing that she's the one that put him on the block which ends up completely severing that ty where ty was one of the only people that wanted to work with her at that point in the game and coming out of that week she was the number one target the following week only to then be saved by the Bel Air safety and even then by the end of the week she votes out jonathan over hope who probably would have been a better ally for her now again yeah Yes, Jonathan did tell her to vote him out. However, that doesn't mean she has to go through with it. But even then, she's voting with the crown, yet is still not included in those plans. I mean, despite the fact that Kuzi did attempt to make a deal with Santina across that week, and Santina was fully loyal to Kuzi, Kuzi decides to still cut her, which again, is a massive knock against Kuzi, which we will talk about. But it's still like really bad on Santina. She's not able to convince people doing what's in their best interest. And to be fair, part of this does come back to week one, where it does feel like the reputation that she had on week one did harm her ability to work with Koozie down the road. But still, really poor play there, and obviously she is eventually taken out by Koozie during the Fatal Feast, with that being Koozie's intention the entire time, if Ty had won the veto, which is just also really bad. She's being taken out by the person that should be keeping her in the game. Again, like, to me, Santina just plays an all-around bad game. I don't think there's a single point in the game where I actually agree with her decision-making. And the only reason she's higher than the people we've talked about so far is because she made it further in the game than those people. But even then, she did so by winning two HOHs, both of which she kind of flounders through, and then being saved by the Bel Air Direct Safety, and even in week three, she gets saved by the fact that Vanessa had left the game, as in that case, probably the noms stay the same, and Santina probably goes home. So, really all around, Santina plays a really bad game. She's here at number 11. Now, number 10, we're moving on to a player that is probably one of the most controversial players of the season, and while this person did a lot of bad, I feel like he also did some good along the way, which is why he's here at number 10, and that person is Zach. And, again, I do not agree with a lot of Zach's methods in the 
game. I do not particularly like Zach. However, he still did completely run the first two weeks. Now, again, he ran it poorly to where he ran it in a way that made him such a clear target by week three and also ran in a way that really just burned a lot of relationships along the way and getting rid of shields for him but he still did completely run those first two weeks he was able to manipulate both santina and dan to do exactly what he wanted which that in itself is pretty impressive however again what he wanted was bad he targets jm someone that wanted to work with him and really strong arms santina so much to the point where by the end of the week she's actively against zach in week two he targets rob someone in his own alliance because he's worried about rob targeting him at some point down the road which again like 100 rob probably would have but not soon and instead again by convincing dan to go after rob he makes it very well known that he's been in charge for those first two hohs putting a bigger target on his back also getting rid of a shield for him someone that also would have not targeted him in the near future future oh really really bad but then we get to his actual boot week which i will say again like i do think in a way he gets a little bit unlucky in the fact that vanessa ends up leaving the game which leads to hope being on the block to which hope wins the veto which causes zach to go up where otherwise if the nom stayed the same Santino would have gone home and who knows where zach would have gone after i mean to probably still booted somewhat soon considering he was still a big target and again he was taken out in a move that i don't think was even in koozie's best interest so that's something else to note but but then the way he plays this week is still like mostly bad i mean he does throw both the hoh and vetoes which is kind of ridiculous considering he actually needed them when he won the week two veto which was completely unnecessary and also put a further target on his back but here he initially gets what he wants at least in terms of the target and getting rid of santina but obviously he gets put up and once doing so obviously we get the entire letter scandal which is obviously just full-on hypocrisy from zach though again like it's something that you would think would further doom him however it kind of doesn't where while he really comes out of it looking like a massive jackass in the house he actually had a chance at staying again like the reason why he stays in the game for as long as he does is because there was this chance at staying he really only needed shanae and claudia to flip over to his side as he obviously had the votes of ty and dan he built such strong relationship with daniel to the point where daniel wasn't willing to cut him at that point and had he gotten claudia and shanae he would have stayed that week in a position where shanae and claudia seemingly really considered it and shanae herself even mentioned after the fact that she regretted not saving Zach. So again, I do think Zach is a somewhat decent player in terms of getting what he wants. He is very effective in how he just plays very aggressively, and that seems to work a decent amount of the time. But he just makes some really dumb strategic decisions with that influence, which is what ends up leaving here at number 10. Now, number nine, we're moving on to a player that I'll be honest, I had no clue where to put this person. As I do think this person played very poorly, however, they made it somewhat deep into the game and also was in a majority alliance at points, and because of that at number nine i do have hope and again i think hope is all around a pretty bad player i mean he's the one that constantly told the hoh to put him on the block simply because he wanted to play in the veto he also was a very chaotic player one that would not tell people about how he's voting and then vote the other way and he has all the ingredients there of being a really bad player however his actual game isn't that bad on paper so again he is in the initial majority where he is part of that bros alliance that runs the first week mind you he's on the outskirts of it and despite him being on the block at many points early on in the game he doesn't go home in a lot of those situations mind you again it is still him telling people to put him on the block which is really bad now obviously he does have the blow with zach and ty though following that he does do some pretty good work in reintegrating himself in the game again he is part of the crown alliance where him and jonathan pull in koozie daniel and anika and through that essentially form this majority alliance with a lot of influence in the game the problem is that pretty much everything goes wrong for that alliance where obviously we do have hope telling ty to put him on the block against renee after Santina had already won the power and then Shanae used the veto on Renee causing Jonathan to go up again a situation that again you can put the blame on Hope here though realistically I do feel like at the end of the day Ty would have put him up by that point anyway but still it does lead to two crown members on the block again a very bad position for him but even then he's able to stay against Jonathan though again to be fair Jonathan kind of lays down his sword so again not that much to fully credit Hope there for but his actual boot week is one that I actually think he was playing somewhat decently where he seemed to be the only person in the crown that had a decent grasp on what the alliance should be doing as a whole the problem is that he wasn't taken seriously largely due to his previous actions where he really just seemed to cater to whatever Kuzi, daniel and nika wanted which did lead to some suboptimal play particularly in the fact that they keep high over dan which was really bad for hope in particular but again he does so because the shady bunch wanted to do so and then in the fatal feast he lets go of santina there because the shady bunch wanted him to do so which is another really bad play from him but again he had the right idea he wanted the crown to go after the girly pops that was the correct strategic move for them at that point in the game however cozy just was unwilling to listen to him then we lead to his actual boot week where 
again, it feels like he's taken out kind of by accident, where, again, like, I think he actually was the optimal move for Claudia to take out. However, instead, Ty was the target, and Hope was only put on the block so that he can compete against Ty in the veto comp, to which he obviously ends up losing, and through that ends up on the block against Koozie, at a point where Hope is taken out of the game, but again, kind of for the wrong reasons, where, again, Hope should be taken out of the game because he is good at physical competitions and would weaken the shady bunch side of things, though, really, it feels like he was taken out more so because they thought he was close to Ty, which was kind of dumb, but anyway, and again, Hope's game is a very mixed bag. Again, there are some really, really low points, certainly in how chaotic of a player he was and how much he didn't really even want to be there. However, I do think there were some decent points here and there, and there were points where he was in the majority, which is what leaves him here at number nine. Now, number eight, we're moving on to a player that made it very, very far in the game. However, I think they just played pretty poorly despite that. And at number eight, I do have Renee. And Renee is such a weird player on this season, one that has very little social capital across the season and was not particularly well liked by most of the cast, especially those outside of her core group, the girly pops, and was constantly on the block and was constantly someone that wasn't even trusted even within her own alliance, yet somehow still makes it to the final five with some win equity. Where despite her being looked at as a joke for most of the season, it did seem like she was on upward trajectory by the time she went home where some people were talking about voting for Renee. But really, most of her game is just very lackluster. Obviously, she ends up on the block week one due to the dead last twist. And it does feel like her overall lack of comparability is something that does lead to people giving her less credit in the game. But she was a potential target there where had the nom stayed the same and JM not went up, Renee would have been a pretty easy target there. Though by the end of week one, we do see some decent strategic play from her. And the fact that she does try to put together these votes to take out Dan over JM trying to get the girly pops and the Kuzi, Daniel, and Nika side of things to work together, though obviously is ineffective in actually doing so. But again, it was a pretty difficult task to do, especially when she didn't have her vote herself. But then we get to week two, where again, by that point, she's looked at as this big strategic player. And through that, the likes of Zach and Ty look at her as a backup target. Though still ends up staying against Rob. Though still was in pretty serious danger at that point, where it really all came down to the Shady Bunch. But then we also get to week three, where the house finally flips against Zach, to which Renee is a part of, at least. She is probably the one that sticks to the plan the most, where the likes of Shania and Claudia do consider flipping back to Ty by the end of the week. However, Renee seemed pretty resolute there. And that is the thing about Renee, is that Renee does seem to be a pretty pretty stable strategic presence, one that does seem to understand the game a big brother, though it's just really bad socially, both in the fact that she doesn't really build that many one-on-one -on -one bonds, but even beyond that, also bad at maintaining those one-on-one -on -one bonds that she builds, where by this point, even though she is close to Claudia and Shania, obviously has the girly pops with them, neither of them fully trust her, and both do talk at points about being willing to let her go, where we do get to the Invisible HOH week, where it's one where by the end of the week, Claudia was directly targeting Renee for the following week and even Shania was willing to let her go by that point also because they seemed to think that she was the invisible HOH which does even make sense though to be fair Renee's reactions were so over the top that I can get why they at least thought it for a bit but again this leads to Renee just acting really emotionally across that week where she's just so upset at the fact that she's being blamed for this that she further sinks her ship and burns her relationships with Ty and Santina and just in general was just really bad socially and again he only gets saved the following week by the fact that Shania does eventually win the veto and use it on her which was an extremely lucky circumstance though to be fair Santina would have been the target over her had the Bella direct safety not come into play but even during that week they do try to save Jonathan essentially despite his wishes and do end up failing at doing so and still decide to vote for Hope for no reason outside of I guess just piss off hope and then after that she's still kind of on the bottom with not much agency in the game though kind of just skates on by through her staying over santina she then has claudia win the next hoh to which she ends up safe and then she wins hoh herself to which i do think she actually plays her hoh decently well in getting rid of koozie the biggest threat on the board while also building up some of her relationships particularly with daniel even though it doesn't really go anywhere but she does also build that final three with claudia and ty which also doesn't go anywhere but at least gave her something to grasp on to though again she's still involved in the girly pops just really blowing the double eviction and letting ty off the block to where shania goes home there and then obviously she goes home herself the following week i get to rocky game one with her having very little agency throughout a lot of the game and she has the correct ideas at points just that she's never able to execute it because of how poor she is socially and she was the only garlic pop that recognized the fact that they should be playing the middle instead of latching on to one of the sides. She did seem to have decent awareness of the game early on, though at the end of the day, I do think her lack of agency and also her lack of effectiveness in the game is really what leaves her here at number eight. Now, number seven, we're moving on to another player that I was largely conflicted on what to do with this person, considering I think this person got massively screwed over in the game, though also 
kind of gave up at the end. But at number seven, I do have Jonathan. Now, Jonathan had a very turbulent game where I actually think at the very beginning of the game, he was probably the best positioned in the game where he was obviously part of this bro alliance, but was also the most affable of the people in that bro alliance. Also being looked at as the least threatening of the bunch where he had these really close connections to the likes of Hope and Rob while he had Zack and Ty both wanting to work with him at that point in the game. Well, again, he still had very good relations with the people outside of that group and just in general felt like a very solidly positioned player until Rob eventually gets taken out where at that point, I did think there was a way for him to continue to be in a solid position. However, he did very much just lean all in into siding with Rob, which to be fair, I think adds more credibility to his good guy persona, which I do think benefited him in the game following this, but it does obviously lead to the downside of now Zack and Ty directly coming for him, obviously knowing that Jonathan would want to get revenge on Zack and Ty, and I do think that is obviously a major knock there for him, though even then he wouldn't have been the primary target for the following round, probably Santino would have been booted in front of him had the likes of Zack or Ty won the comp, but he definitely was in a precarious spot at that point, but again, following that week, he does do pretty good work in forming the Crown Alliance, where at that point he's put into this majority alliance that seemed to be pulled to run the entire game while also still having connections outside that alliance still again still having connections to the girly pops still having connections to santina so at that point he was in a pretty good spot though even over the course of that week he does have some some optimal play through letting the shady bunch get their way and using the veto on ty a move that was definitely way more beneficial to the shady bunch than it was to jonathan himself where in that position it leaves Ty in the game, someone that is coming for him at some point in the game. That is much more likely to go for him than the likes of the Shady Bunch. So, suboptimal move there. But still, the Shady Bunch was loyal to Jonathan and Hope. And while, again, they were still creating these offshoot groups just in case, I do think they truly did have the intentions of going to the end with Jonathan and Hope. However, that obviously comes undone during his eventual boot round, where, again, it is a very unlucky set of circumstances to lead to him going home. Now, mind you, for Ty, who was the HOH, he should have been the target to begin with. And I will say it is kind of impressive in the fact that he's able to avoid being actually targeted by Ty and ends up going out completely by accident here, where what ends up happening, obviously, is that Santino wins the protection safety, to which the primary target is off the board. But then... Obviously, Shania uses the veto on Renee, who are the next two targets on the board, to which essentially forces Ty to put Jonathan on the block against Hope, which even in that position, he had a lot of potential to stay in the game. The problem is that he didn't want to, and kind of laid down his sword, and told the likes of Santina and the Shady Bunch that it's okay if they vote him out. And again, that is the part that I'm a bit hesitant on, on this ranking, where really, had he not gotten extremely unlucky in that position, he would have been pretty poised to have a deep run, probably would have been the type of person to potentially win a jury vote. However, he actively sabotages that and actually kind of gives up in the game, largely due to how loyal of a person he is and how he isn't willing to go against the people in his own alliance. So again, it's kind of a conflicting game. I do think he still has some major positives in the fact that, again, he goes out in kind of a fluky way and probably would have had a decent amount of win equity, but it is just how little he tried on his way out and also kind of the rockiness of his mid game that does leave him here at number seven. At number six, we're moving on to a player that straight up five and six were very close to me, but probably the person here being the more stable strategic presence, though considering their placement and complete lack of win equity, at number six, I do have Shania. And Shania is a person that I think is a decent all around player. I think she is a very competent strategic player and still not the best in the world. Again, she did let Claudia not put Ty on the block, so that's pretty bad. But I'll say that, I feel like Shania had good ideas at points. I do feel like she had moments where she fully recognized what the girly pop should do, even though they didn't fully go through that all the time but again she does have the wherewithal to stick to her guns and use the veto on renee and really out of the girly pops i feel like she is the most consistent player of that bunch however obviously a major issue comes from the fact that again i don't think she wins a jury vote where it seemed like there was no one that really respected her on the jury outside dan zabo but that's obviously for other reasons like i just think she very much struggles to win against anybody but again she is a decent all-around player now she does spend the first half of the game kind of just stumbling about obviously she's part of the girly pops however she doesn't seem to be that focused on the game early on she's being more focused on her relationships with rob and with dan and the likes of Renee and Claudia are more in the out front at that point. Or I do feel like once Dan is on his way out, I do feel like we see her play a lot more. We see her start to actually solidify these bonds outside of her initial group, forming this decent bond with Daniel and Anika that later has them forming a Final Four deal. We also see the girly pops being in the middle position at a point. However, I do think like Claudia, which we'll later talk about, I do have fallen her 
picking a side, we do see her supposedly wanting to keep Zack during his boot round, and it was Claudia that had to go against that plan. I do think that's kind of a misstep there. Again, squandering this middle position that he could have played up. And then really there were points in the mid game where the girly pops did seem to be on the bottom. However, I do think a major reason of why the girly pops made it as far as they did is because of Shanae. The fact that Shanae used the Vita on Renee, saved Renee during Ty's HOH, that obviously led to the girly pops being able to win the next few comps. That allowed them to be three of the final six. Literally half the people left in the game at that point. And again, we see her be a rational strategic thinker at points with her recognizing that getting rid of hope over Ty during the final eight was better for the girly pops positioning which again obviously Ty wins out and it doesn't really work in their favor but again I do think it is the better strategic move on paper along with her getting rid of Kuzi at the final seven with her being the only one to stay resolute in that plan the entire time but obviously we get to her eventual boot round which I do think is a very fluky way for her to go again it does stem from the fact that again she wasn't resolute in getting Claudia to not put Ty on a block that is bad however I also feel like the fact that she was the one to go out there to begin with was kind of questionable there's a lot of the reason why she's put up on the block in that specific situation is because she's not included in the final three deal that claudia had with ty and renee however the major reasons why she wasn't included in that final three deal are one the fact that renee was the hoh and through that they thought renee was more important to be included there as initially it was a plot to get renee to break the tie in koozie's favor though even beyond that it's because of this misguided notion that shania is extremely close to daniel and anika which again, she was close to daniel and anika but so was claudia they were in a final four deal together and it feels like it's because of claudia's own warp perception of the game in this position that leads to her being willing to let shania go because she for some reason thinks that shania is getting too close to daniel and nika when she herself should have been doing the same thing so yeah, i think her boot was kind of wonky though at the end of the day again she had no win equity and was not playing particularly well for the first like third of her game to where I, I felt like that was enough question marks there to leave her behind here at number six. Now number five, we're moving on to a player that, again, I feel like played a very similar game to Shania. Dazi made it farther and probably had more winkly as a whole, though also probably had more downsides to their game. But at number five, I do have Claudia. And as the Claudia is the runner up the season. And again, I very much debated her or Shania. I do feel like personally, I look at Shania as a more competent all-around player. I think Shania is probably the one with the more stable strategic mind. While I feel like Claudia has a terrible strategic mind where I can't even think of a single spot in the game where I think Claudia was actively playing well strategically. Now, early on, she does get a lot of credit on the show for being the one to point out the Bros Alliance, though, again, I feel like that's kind of overhyped. And really, just in general, it's not that impressive of a read there. But even then, she's even blindsided in that first week where JM gets put on the block. She's not even told about that plan, despite the fact that Ty, her showman to that point, is the one that's leading that vote. And again, it's told about the Rob vote. They're not really that integral in that vote either. During the Zach vote, she is a pretty integral swing vote there to where she does very much consider keeping Zach for a lot of that week. Though it does decide not to the night before. Though I will say, again, like I feel like this was such a squandered opportunity. We're coming into this week. The fact that Koozie decided to target Zach really took Koozie out of this middle position in the house and really gave the girly pops this middle position. Where this should have been a point where the girly pops should try to play the middle and make promises to both sides. However, Claudia, again, kind of wastes that opportunity in this position. More so openly siding with the Zach, Ty, and Dan's of the world. And through that kind of harms her overall position when she could have been trying to ride the middle and let the two sides go after each other. Now finally, she ends up on the block, obviously, when Dan goes home, though. Was never in any true danger there. But it is during this Invisible HOH week that I really started to question her strategic decision-making even more, where it is during this week where we do see her fully buy into this notion that Renee is the Invisible HOH, and through that starts to lose trust in Renee to the point where she's actively targeting Renee by the end of this week and would have been willing to let her go even after Shania had won the veto the following week, which is all really so awful play there. Despite her being looked at as the leader of the Girly Pops, it really feels like the success of the Girly Pops were kind of despite of her to where it felt like she at many points was so willing to break that alliance up to which obviously she eventually does late in the game but again like she very much could have done so a lot earlier and ruined her game even more than what she did down the road but again it is due to the fact that renee stays that allows the girly pops to really hold the numbers for a while after the fatal feast with them winning the next three hohs at that point while also making a deal with koozie to keep themselves safe during the fatal feast itself which i mean to be fair wouldn't really give the girly pops that much credit for that would really more so just fault koozie which again we'll talk about 
By the end, or along the way, she does end up targeting Ty, putting him on the block, which, again, like, actually getting rid of Ty at this point was probably not the optimal play, though I do think it did help with her perception, though, again, she doesn't fully buy into that, as we see at the final six, where, obviously, by that point, she has a final three deal with Ty and Renee, and decides to leave Ty off the block because of that, allowing Ty to use the veto in a position that forces Claudia to get rid of one of her own girly pops. Obviously, really bad strategic play there, and really a game-ending move, in my eyes, where, one, I do think it very much harms her jury perception, both in the fact that she allowed something like this to happen and allowed Ty to get his way, but also in the fact that she has to let go of a girly pop with her also cutting Renee to falling around. I think it really makes the girly pops upset at her for not being loyal to them when they really needed her. And again, her cutting of Renee at the final five is another really asinine move, one that again just has her following whatever Ty is doing and really just burning a lot of relationships for no reason there, especially when those relationships would have very much helped her navigate through the game and would have been people that she would have been able to beat. I do think she handily beat Shania at the end and I think Renee is someone that she definitely could have been as well and the final four is another situation where despite the fact that she wins the veto there she seemed to be unsure of which way to go until Ty essentially told her that he's siding with Daniel which seemed to be a deciding factor for her so despite how much talk Claudia has about how Ty didn't take her to the end she took him I do feel like a lot of her decision making towards the end of the game was pretty much based around what Ty wanted her to do. And really, the entire argument is what makes all this even worse, where we obviously see Claudia win final HOH, and despite having this opportunity to take out Ty, who she handily loses against, she instead decides to take him to the end. To which, while she tries to argue that it was her decisions that got Ty to the end, based on how she cut her own alliance to go to the end of Ty, it more so makes it come off as Ty manipulated her into taking him to the end. And really, I just feel like Claudia's overall jury management here was really abysmal, particularly with the end gamers here. So even the girly pop seemed to be pretty anti-Claudia by the end, with Shania seemingly only voting for her as a sympathy vote. Now, I will say the one minor positive here is the fact that Claudia probably loses against Daniel as well. I do feel like Daniel probably would have handily beaten her, though to be fair, I think Claudia would have probably had at least more of a chance there, especially with her cutting tie at the very end. But again, like really, as I mentioned in my review, I just feel like Claudia's game here is just extremely frustrating. It's a game of her seemingly making really terrible strategic decisions at almost every single opportunity. One where it really feels like she was playing more so for second place than actually winning, despite the fact that she actually was trying to win, but just making these incorrect decisions to actually try to win. Again, just being handed these very good positions throughout the game and just wasting the opportunity every single time. She had this opportunity to play the middle earlier on in the game when Zach went home and instead decided to latch on to Ty, Dan, and Zach. She comes to the final six with half of the house on her side and decides to cut those people to go to the end game with people that are all going to beat her. So I, I just feel like Claudia just plays a game of a lot of wasted potential because that for me, she's here at number five. Now, number four, moving on to a player that having her this high seems a bit weird, especially considering there's not really a singular thing I can point out from this player that I think they did individualistically. However, at number four, I do have Anika. And again, Anika's a tough player here in the sense that obviously a lot of people assume that she's this goat that didn't do anything in the game. However, again, I don't think that's true. I do think Anika is someone that played alongside the rest of the Shady Bunch. I mean, her, Daniel, and Koozie were really playing this middle position extremely well, with her and Daniel in particular being able to be in that position while also not be looked at as an outward threat like Koozie was to where they had a much smoother ride to the end in a position where they would have had a decent amount of win equity had they gotten to the end with someone outside of the crown. Again, the crown was obviously this alliance that was mostly loyal to each other in terms of wanting to vote for each other to win the game. And through that, if Anika got to the end, I do think she would have had those crown votes. Though at the same time, I do think she struggles with getting many votes outside that, which is the one hesitancy there. But again, that would have put her extremely close to winning just outright or I do think there are situations where she could pick up another vote or two so I do think Anika had some win equity to her while also being like again solidly positioned for most of the game now I will say I do think she had bad strategic reads at points however I think she also had some decent reads here and there but again early on she was like talking about how JM is running the game despite the fact that JM was very clearly on the bottom obviously at the final five HOA she decides to target Claudia over Ty and decides to leave Ty off the block that's all pretty bad too and again is shocked when Ty does the same thing that he did to Claudia to her and again all that is really bad and in retrospect could have been a potentially game ending move for her where if you really think about it if she is able to get Claudia out that week which is what would have happened had she put 
Claudia and Ty on the block, where Ty would enforce to use the veto on himself, causing Claudia and Renee to be on the block by the end of it, to which obviously her and Daniel would just vote Claudia out in the following week if Ty still wins HOH. More than likely, Daniel ends up winning the veto, considering Renee was not particularly good at those sort of competitions, and through that, Renee probably goes home at four, to where we get the final three with Ty, Daniel, and Anika, where Daniel has a very good chance at beating Ty in part three of the HOH, to where... A Daniel and Anika final two is kind of a close vote, I think, where I do think some people would have been pro Anika over Daniel by that point. So, again, it is a pretty bad move there at the final five, but I think a lot of her game up to that point is, like, just kind of solid. And I'll say I didn't love how she handled the Koozie relationship, where she was obviously acting, like, personally betrayed by Koozie, and didn't have particularly great jury management with her, though t- technically Kuzi left the game still pro Anika f- over Daniel for whatever reason. But really, Anika plays like the middle game of this season like decently well. Again, working alongside Kuzi and Daniel, not really being in any danger at any point in the game there. Also having this very solid alliance in the crown that, again, just gets kind of unlucky time after time with how the rounds are playing out. Though, again, considering her wonky play outside that, It's tough to put her too, too much higher here, but I do have her here at number four. Now, number three, we're moving on to a player that, for me, two and three were very much up for debate as well. However, despite this person winning the game, at number three, I do have Ty. And obviously, Ty is a very difficult player to assess. Obviously, he has won the game now, winning in a pretty dominant fashion, winning in an eight to one vote, where he didn't even need to technically win out in the final round there. And in a position where he did have a decent amount of agency at the beginning and the ends of the game. Like, he did have more agency in the game than most people we've talked about on the list so far. However, when looking through his game bit by bit, I just don't find his game overly impressive. Now, again, I do think he plays the game well-ish at the beginning. He's in a very strong position early on, where he is part of the Bros Alliance, while also having a final two with Zack within that. And those two are essentially running the entire show early on. Ozzy through Zack, really manipulating both Santina and Dan to do whatever he wants. Ty is able to benefit off of that. And he is the person that really led the charge against Rob. Though at the same time, that's a bad move. And getting rid of Rob at that point made no sense. He's getting rid of someone that actively wanted to take him much further into the game. Where again, Rob was actively trying to add him to side deals that he was having going on. Yeah, he decides to cut Rob seemingly just due to his jealousy of him in the game. Which significantly weakened his position to where we follow that up with Zach obviously going out. Partly due to the ramifications of taking Rob out the previous week. And at this point, this causes Ty to now be at the bottom. In a position where we obviously see him go through Lettergate, which is a really bad social move there in particular. Really burning his relationships for the sake of trying to get Hope kicked out of the game, I guess. Trying to save Zach that way, even though they could have potentially saved Zach without that. As, again, they do come relatively close to getting the votes to keep Zach that week. Though it doesn't obviously follow through. And again, who knows if it would have fell through if they didn't do a move like that. But obviously, to go along with this, we do have him then trying to quit the game. But we get to the Invisible HOH week, where he is put on the block against Dan, and he's technically safe that week again, no matter what, Dan was going home. Again, there's a lot of talk about how Daniel really messed up everything by using the veto on him, but again, like, at the end of the day, Ty was never going home there. Always the plan was Dan, and to be fair, I think Dan was probably the correct call at that point, where Dan proved himself more in competitions up to that point, and that was looked at as more of a threat. However, obviously, this is the point where now Ty goes on his winning streak, winning the next HOH. Though, even in that position, ends up making a move that is suboptimal for his game. Initially, wanting to target Santina, who was one of the only other buffers in the game for him, and through that was going to significantly weaken his position by getting rid of her. Though, obviously, he's forced to not do so because of the Bel Air direct safety, to where then he decides to target Renee, who is also someone that is bad for him to target there, especially when there's a much bigger alliance in the crown directly coming for him. And again, it's just due to complete luck here and him misguidingly picking Shanae and the veto pick that his own plan gets ruined a plan that again was terrible to begin with but through that forces him to target jonathan who should have been his target to begin with again him kind of lucking into a good position simply because of a lot of weird circumstances happening around him but finally as we get to the fatal feast where obviously he wins the safety comp there and had he not he would have gone home i follow that up with another week where he's the target once again where claudia his own showmance puts him on the block however he only survives there due to winning the veto once again in a position where he again almost certainly would have gone home had he not then we get to the Renee HOH, another position where he was 
the target would have gone home had he not won a veto again all bad though i will say during these weeks i don't actually think ty is playing that poorly from the bottom where i feel like ty is the type of player that actually plays worse when he has power or when he's on the bottom and is just trying to stay alive i think he actually like plays somewhat competently in making rational arguments him seeing the game for what it is so at least there's that but again after this we see him back in power where we get to the double eviction where again bravo and him from being left off the block by claudia again he does make this deal with renee and claudia a final three deal that they were seemingly going to stick to and he does obviously build a very strong bottom koozie on her way out which seemed to be this major turning point for his game this point where the jury was probably starting to turn around on him however again i also feel like at this point a lot of the reason why people were starting to want to work with him was not due to anything that he was actually doing actively well but more so just due to the fact that people just assumed that he was going to win competitions with the fact that he had been safe for four weeks in a row now and through that he kind of just gave up on the concept of taking him out again largely in in a position where a lot of these comps that he's winning are extremely physical competitions competitions that very much favor these broy guys which end up being a rare commodity at the end of the game and really just all of it just feels like him lucking his way into a good position and lucking out that he's the only athletic guy left while also lucking himself in the position of production just picking challenges that have physical components to it to which he is obviously greatly benefited by that but even then at the final six we do see him win the veto to which he forces claudia's hand and getting rid of shania a move that i don't even know if this is in his best interest now it is a big move that he can claim as a move of his own a move that he can claim as something that he did outside of just winning competitions even though again it's based around him winning a competition but i do feel like shania is someone that again keeping shania in the game would have been someone that he could beat in comps while also it's on that he for sure beats in a jury vote now at the end of the day again we know now that his jury prospects as a whole definitely went up where he didn't necessarily need someone like a shania who would have been a locked in person to beat however i do think it is not necessarily the optimal move here to get rid of shania especially over the likes of renee who's probably more competent in quiz competitions which are which shania was clearly not as good at and also through doing this this should have burned him a lot of social capital and the fact that he is openly betraying claudia however again at the end of the day it's claudia who just goes back to him constantly anyway but again we get to the final five where once again he's left on the block by anika where i do feel like this time he does do some decent work in getting anika not to put him up he actually does have good conversations with her to get her to do this unlike the claudia situation where i think that was more so just rely on the overall concept of her feeling like her needing to work with him due to his comp ability like this i do think was actually more so decent play for him to keep himself off the block and again i think at the time i definitely was just to move a lot more in burning his social capital with anika in order to save claudia though again considering the fact that claudia did genuinely take him to vinyl two obviously i think it, this makes this move a bit better but at final four again we do see him win hoh and even then have influence in getting claudia to take daniel to the final three a move that again i don't think is actually in ty's best interest where again, i think anika is more likely to take ty to the end than claudia but also is a lesser competition threat to where it would have been much easier to beat anika while daniel was a bit stronger in competitions while also someone that was more likely to cut him at the end so i do think that was a bad read as well but then obviously we do have claudia winning final hoh to where she takes him which is at least impressive in the fact that again like he didn't need to win out to the very end so at least there's that but again i think his overall game philosophy does seem extremely flawed though and to where again i think his jury questioning was just really bad he's constantly talking about how he hasn't lied in the game and him blaming other people for their eliminations i thought that was pretty bad also his message to the jury that he got that was really bad as well where he was essentially telling the jury what their criteria should be and really just in general again like i think ty is just a really bad social player and despite his talk about how he had an underestimated social game it's like no you had a really terrible social game and most of the things that he propped up as his social game were not even his social game they mostly relate to his strategic game as again i think strategically while very messy throughout a lot of the game i think there are at least moments where he is competent strategically obviously physically he wins with these amount of comps now again i think mental cops do seem to be a major weakness of his particularly in ones that aren't purely days related but still obviously good at competitions but i think just socially he is truly abysmal to where it really feels like the only reason he wins the jury vote is due to people's respect for his competition wins and also respect for things he did 
strategically those strategic things things that he were able to do due to him winning competitions to which he had no actual social capital to pull off those things outside of winning those competitions like to me it's like ty's game is so reliant on competitions not even just in terms of safety but also in terms of how he gained social capital and how he was able to execute the moves that he made i don't think there's ever a point outside of the rob vote in week two which was in itself a terrible move where he's able to use his social game his relationships in order to pull off a strategic move despite the fact that again he didn't need to win out to the very end and the fact that he does obviously win a jury vote in dominant fashion against claudia i think he would have had a very good chance of beating daniel as well along with anika and really just probably anybody after koozie was booted like that is something to at least give him some credit for but I just find the basis around his entire game to be something that I don't find overtly impressive. And considering how there was a pretty big middle stretch there where he was completely on the outs and need to win a good chunk of comps. And also, again, the bad strategic decisions he made at points, for me, he does still land here number three. Now number two. And again, this is the person that for me, I and this person were extremely close. However, the reason I went with this person above Ty is because, again, I think there are more points where... This person was actively able to execute their plans through their social relationships and also was probably a better position to win the game just outright. And at number two, I do have Kuzi. Now, Kuzi is a very tough player to assess because I think there is a massive dichotomy between Kuzi's social game and her strategic game. Now, again, comp-wise, she was one of the more solid comp competitors of the season. She definitely was the best of the crown, though that's not saying much. But really, she was the only person in her alliance that was actually winning competitions, which is probably a major downside for her. As, again, socially, she was incredible, especially with those in her alliance. Again, she was in this really insane position at the final 10 where three of the people there were willing to take her to the end and actively lose against her where the likes of jonathan santina and hope were all talking about how they wanted to go to the end with and how they were willing to lose the problem is i mean one she targets santina that one's actively bad but then even beyond that her side just couldn't win the competitions to keep those people around instead she ended up being in a position where she was left with all the people that didn't want to take her to the end which obviously leads to her eventual elimination and while a lot of that is kind of bad luck i do also feel like a lot of it is also on her a lot of or strategic decisions made along the way. Now, I do think Kuzi plays the first few weeks pretty well, where she is very much in the middle of the house. She does have these very strong relationships with the likes of Ty and Zach, and has no one really targeting her there. She had the potential to flip the votes to save JM and flip the votes to save Rob. Doesn't end up doing so, again, correctly so in my mind. I do think it was very integral for her to keep her relationships with Ty and Zach, which is what makes her winning HOH in week three very questionable. It puts her in a position where she obviously has to make a stand at that point. And initially, I thought she was making the correct move and targeting Santina over Ty and Zach, keeping up this facade of her working with Ty and Zach while also trying to weaken them. And to be fair, if Vanessa had not left the game, more than likely the noms would stay the same and she would have kept on targeting Santina. However, once the noms changed, I do think she makes the very misguided play in targeting Zach, a move that I think is really detrimental to her game and really I think is the star of the downfall of her game to where while she does end up gaining a lot of respect from the house for making this move this really big move it's also a move that puts her so far out in front at the very beginning of the game we're only in week three and she already is looked at as this consensus winner if she's able to get to the end while also is burning her relationship with ty which too fresh she recovers down the road but again at this point puts her in a precarious spot there well also doesn't even secure the girly pops loyalty where coming into this week a lot of the reason why she goes after zach is because she had the women coming together to form this new group though that group doesn't even fully stick to her the girly pops seem to flip over back to the other side by the end of the week and all that's really bad there like i really feel like this was a really terrible hoh gameplay wise for Kuzi, one that took her from this really solid middle position to now her being one of the leaders of one of the sides of the house to her while yes it makes her so she's a guaranteed win if she gets to the end she also is very unlikely to get there but i think she is very much bad from the fact that girly pops weren't that good and through that the girly pops very blatantly picked a side and through that lost their middle position to her now the likes of jonathan santina and hope latched on to Kuzi. Daniel and Anika now allowing them to play the middle once again and putting Kuzi in a very strong position through now the formation of the crown, a new majority alliance that 
I mean, Kuzi is the head of, though, it was poised to take her further in the game in a position where, again, she has two people there that are undyingly willing to take her to the very end in a position where she just beats everybody. So again, that puts her back in a good position, but again, seemingly due to out of things in her control, again, seemingly due to the mistakes of the girly pops, but again, I still do give her credit for the strong relationship she had with Jonathan and Hope, which obviously play a major factor into that. And again, we do see her rebuilding her relationship with Ty through her getting some of the credit for getting Daniel to use the veto on Ty, while also creating a side deal with Ty and Claudia, while obviously still having the John and Hope relationship, that really puts her in a very solid position at this point. Or at this point in the game, I do think she is partially misguided in the fact that she is actively targeting Santina, someone that very much wants to take her to the very end at this point, someone that has a lot of respect for Kuzi, wanted to take her to the end to where she would probably lose to her. So I think Kuzi's targeting of Santina here was extremely misguided, and to be fair, some of this stumps back back to week one, where she saw Santina backstab JM, and I think through that lost trust in Santina for the rest of the season, but I still think it is extremely this guy for her to be targeting Santina and not recognizing the fact that Santina is actually loyal to her. As we do see them starting to bond by the end of week five to where we actually see Kuzi do some pretty good work in trying to pull Santina in only for her to just drop that, which is all really bad. But again, obviously week five is a week where the crowd is just put in a bad position through all these wonky situations with the Bel Air direct safety and the veto being used to where Jonathan goes out to where both Jonathan and Hope were going to want to take Kuzi to the end. So it's kind of a marginal choice for her personally. Though again, she wins the next HOH. And this is where her game really crumbles for me to where the clear target here is the girly pops. And the girly pops were three of the final eight in this position. And they were directly coming after her at this point in the game where she was supposed to be their target coming into the week. However, she decides to try to call a truce with them, a truce that obviously wasn't going to last, but call that truce in order to target Ty and Santina, two people in the middle that were leaning in her direction, with Santina again being 100% loyal to her. Howard then actively gets her out through the Fatal Feast, again, all really bad, again, getting rid of a number that she should have had on her side, but just threw away. Now, following that, we do have Claudia's HOH, where Uzi isn't put up initially, though she is put up after Ty wins the veto, and through that isn't a precarious spot, though obviously does survive there, though also was probably actually the optimal move to keep her in the game at that point considering how blatant of a target she was but that leads us to our actual boot week where again i think kuzi plays terribly once again where she seems to think she's like fully safe that week for some reason despite the fact that renee really never commits to keeping her safe long term she does say that she's gonna keep her off the block initially though it seems like kuzi really just plays the rest of the week as if she's locked safe despite the fact that she clearly isn't and we do see her again have a decent strategic thought here and trying to keep ty around ty someone that could potentially take her to the end someone that again she would beat as she would beat everybody and at that point it is better for her to weaponize ty as someone to take her to the end and through that again like her wanting to win the veto to save ty is a very impressive strategic thought there the problem is that she throws the veto to get a thousand dollars which is really bad and puts her in a position where she's going home so again it's just like i feel like koozie's just such a mixed player and there are these massive positives in the fact that she had a lot of influence over how the game played out. She was in this majority line to the crown at one point that just got extremely unlucky outside of the Santana boot in these like twists and comp results that led to them being on the outs. She obviously had a lot of win equity where she's a lock win if she gets to the end and also had people that were willing to actively take her to the end. But again, I feel like she does very poor work in optimizing her path to the end. Again, she takes out Santina, who is a locked number for her. She keeps the girly pops around in a position where they're directly coming for her. And she makes a big target of herself by taking out Zach during her first HOH week. Like, I just feel like there are so many misguided strategic plays across the season that do make me question her quality as a player. Though, again, in comparison to the rest of the cast, the cast that I don't think contain that many good players, I do feel like sheer impressiveness of Kuzi's middle game to where she had three people willing to lay down their swords to take her to the very end and lose to her, along with the fact that had the crown been able to win those competitions, I do feel like she would have been in a very solid spot to go on to win the game. That is enough for me to have Kuzi here at number two. Number one, the number one player from Big Brother, Canada 11, is a player that, again, I see get trashed on online as a floater, as someone that didn't do anything in the game. And I significantly disagree, where I think this person is by far the best player of the season. And at number one, I do have Daniel. And again, I do feel like Daniel is easily the best player of this season. I think Daniel essentially played the game that so many other people on this season tried to play. Being able to play the middle and have good relations with all sides to where he was pretty much protected for most of the game. I mean, there was really never a point that Daniel was in any semblance of any danger until what, final five? 
Or there were literally just no scenarios where he was going home because of how strong of a foundation he built. Now, again, I do think his first few weeks are a little bit rocky. I do think, like Kuzi, he is in a pretty good spot of having these relationships with Ty and Zach. And while not in the driver's seat, is decently enough position there. Though also has very strong bonds from outside that. We do see Daniel having good bonds with the girly pops in particular, which puts him in good standing with them. Though again, I think the Zach boot week is probably the week that I have the most question marks from. Not from the fact that he wants to keep Zach around, because I actually think that is 100% the optimal move. I think he is 100% right in his debates with Kuzi across that week that they should be keeping Zach around as a shield. However, I think my question mark is the fact that I don't know how much of that was game. I do think Daniel legitimately had a good relationship with Zach. I want to keep him around because of that more so than game. And I think that is definitely a question mark along with the fact that he was unwilling to vote Zach out, which I do think that just severs trust with Kuzi, which is also not great. So yeah, I do think that is questionable. However, from that point on, especially that point until like around the double eviction, I think he's actually playing the game very well. Again, he is in this middle position with the Shady Bunch where they obviously build the crown to where they are an outright majority alliance at that point. They also build the side deal with Claudia and tie that puts him in the middle while well, daniel uses the veto on tie which is debatably the best move of the season which i find it so funny that a lot of people talk about this as this terrible move that daniel's an idiot for using the veto on tie when the thing is tie was staying anyway again during that week dan zaba was the target no matter what dan zaba was the one that proved himself in competitions more at that point than ty there was no way ty was actually going home that week because there was no reason to think that ty should be going home that week i think it's a lot of revisionist history for people to be talking about this as if ty would have gone home during that weekend should have gone home as straight up that is part of why i do think ty is not as good of a competitor as most people say because straight up i think dan probably would have beaten ty in most cops i do think it's the correct decision to be taking out dan instead of ty and by daniel using the veto on ty it actually does something really impressive that actually pays massive dividends for him until the end of his game in the fact that by using the veto on ty he ends up building this relationship with ty building trust with ty to the point where despite keeping Daniel around, not being in Ty's best interest for a lot of the points in the end game, he does so. I think this is actually probably one of the best moves of the season in him using the veto on Ty, a move that actually allows him to navigate through these portions of the game that he simply had no right of getting through. Where a lot of people like to credit this to, oh, Daniel just wasn't a threat and he couldn't win competitions, when that's simply not the reason why he was being kept around. He was being kept around because of his actual good relationships with people, which they openly even say. And again, in connection to Ty, it is this veto play in particular that pays massive dividends for him towards the end game and again following this week still part of the crown that gets unlucky in the fact that jonathan is forced to go home there and following that again is part of santina going home which really for daniel in particular getting rid of santina is actually not entirely bad and that's because of how good of a position daniel is in the game at this point where if santina goes he literally has a deal with everyone left in the game outside of renee where at that point in the game he had obviously the Final three with Kuzi and Anika. He had final two with Anika in particular, where they had always been planning on cutting Kuzi before the end, as they knew that they couldn't beat her. To which, at this point, all the jury members were talking about how Danny was the second biggest jury threat on the board, which put him in a very strong position win equity wise. But even beyond that, again, also had the crown, obviously. Also had a very good relationship with the girly pops, including making a final four deal with claudia and shanea putting him in good standing there while also having this deal with ty through him using the veto on him that really locked daniel in for a very solid and easy ride to the very end of the game but again not because he's being dragged because he can't win competitions but because he solidly put himself in that position again he is building these relationships he is making these deals that is putting him in that position however that positioning can only take him so far and really in many ways he kind of reminds me of players like a tommy or even like a tim dormer and these players that are so well positioned in the game are pretty much at the top of the power structure are one of the safest people in the game that leaves them as the last standing of their alliance, though there still ends up being this other presence in the game that is better at competitions that ends up snowing them out at the end. And Daniel kind of ends up being in that position here to where through the likes of Ty and Claudia winning the rest of the competitions, Daniel ends up losing a lot of his allies along the way. Again, all the crown members end up going one by one by one. He loses Shania and later Renee, who he also later builds a final two deal with during her HOH. He loses all these potential allies along the way to where he's left in this final three with Ty and Claudia one of these few scenarios where he's essentially locked out of a final two situation where again it is obviously the comps that 
catch up to him at this point. His lack of comp ability, again, this thing we've seen really harm these other really impressive players in the past. I do think Daniel is kind of in line with those players. Now, I will say, I do think Daniel does have some suboptimal play along the way, though. Again, like, I do think his relationship with Kuzi obviously gets extremely fractured. And while I do think Kuzi was kind of being irrational in her hatred of Daniel on her way out, I do feel like Daniel also did not handle their parting conversation particularly well. I do also feel like Daniel allowing Anika to not put Ty on the block is also actively bad as well there. And again, is it a position where that could have been a game changing move there? Where, as I mentioned earlier when talking through Anika, if they change that up, more than likely he gets to the end of Anika in a position where, again, he could have easily won that. But even despite that, again, the key is kept around over Anika at the Final Four, which is a very impressive move there another situation where people seem to prop this up to the fact that daniel was not a threat when that's simply not the case it's the opposite where we even get open talk about how daniel's better at competitions than anika however they're keeping daniel around because of their personal connection to daniel now again i think in terms of win equity by this point in the game i do think it is questionable i do think for sure he beats claudia as i do think with claudia he would have had most of the votes of the crown while also having the likes of a dan a santina even a renee possibly even a pissed off tie in his favor while i do think the votes between him and ty are a lot more rocky i think it's probably leaning tie though again there's a lot of votes that are kind of up for grabs but it's still a position though that his win equity was still there and especially again like if he gets standing against nika i do think there's a serious chance he beats her like i feel like the fact that daniel essentially got the worst possible case scenario happen here of the tie and claudia final two that ends up running the table comps wise and is still able to get to a final three situation where he has a win scenario is still very very impressive considering pretty much everything went wrong for daniel towards the end game here again to me i do look at daniel as a very impressive player here one that i think actively played the best game of the season now again i think there are still flaws i don't think he is a flawless player by any means however again i think against the rest of this field i think he is easily the best player here i think his positioning in this season was really insane with again a lot of that being due to active social and strategic work he did while also still having some win equity at the end so yeah for me i just feel like it's not really close here i think daniel ends up being the very easy number one in my eyes but there we go. I mean, that is my player ranking for Big Brother Canada 11. As that wraps up my coverage for BB Can 11. If we get a BB Can 12, I will be back with similar coverage for that. Obviously, coming up, we do have a couple shows ending in the Challenge World Championship and Survivor 44. Well, I'll be doing reviews of those along with the player ranking for Survivor 44 as well. And obviously, we have BB 25 coming up relatively soon, so you can stay tuned for coverage of that as well. But for now, that is the end of my coverage for BB Can 11. Thank you for watching.